With this lecture, we begin our coverage of inventory management. Chances are you have been exposed to this topic in prior classes or on the job. Still, I want to take the opportunity to briefly emphasize just how important inventories are from both a corporate and economic perspective. Inventories are all around us, in warehouses, in retail stores, trucks, and even in your own pantry. Without the flow and storage of inventory, there would be no production or sales of goods. In other words, our economy would come to a standstill. Speaking of economy, let's imagine that this bar represents the total economic activity in the US measured in US dollars. I'm talking about a gross domestic product of over $18 trillion here. 8% of this amount is spent on transporting and storing inventories. This is what we call logistics costs. About one-fourth of that, so 2% of the total economic output in the US, is consumed by inventory costs. These numbers are even more impressive when we consider that only about one-third of the US GDP is generated by those industries that actually produce and move physical goods and thus carry inventories. Now we see that the average manufacturing firm spends nearly a quarter of its revenues on logistics costs, and inventory holding costs alone consume 7% of every sales dollar. To be clear, I'm talking about a massive $400 billion here that US manufacturers and retailers spend in terms of inventory holding costs every single year. But in reality, this is only part of the total inventory-related cost. While holding inventory costs money, so does not holding inventory. Let me explain. When a customer goes to shop and finds an item is out of stock, then the store will lose that sale. And if that customer goes and finds a better deal at a competing retailer, for example, then the store will even lose the customer. This means lost profit. This highlights the challenge of inventory management. We don't want to hold too much inventory, but we don't want to have too little inventory either. So the key question we must address is this, how much inventory is needed? Of course, the answer to this question will vary by firm, product and market, but it will always be guided by two key principles, efficiency and effectiveness. Efficiency highlights that we want to make decisions that help us minimize costs. Effectiveness, in turn, emphasizes the need to provide good customer service. In other words, not carrying sufficient amounts of inventory and stocking out all the time really isn't an option. Now that we understand the broader objectives of inventory management, let's take a look at a roadmap that we will follow. There are dozens, perhaps even hundreds, of different inventory management models that are designed to help guide firms' inventory decisions. Broadly speaking, we can differentiate between inventory management models that treat customer demand as a known or deterministic variable. And those models that assume demand and lead times are random variables. Let's focus on known demand models first. As the name suggests, these are inventory management models that assume away any uncertainty in demand. Of course, we're quite unlikely to encounter situations in the real world where we know with certainty what future demand will be. But while these models are, perhaps, a little simplistic, they are a great starting point for our exploration of this topic. And they are the foundation of the more, quote-unquote, complicated and realistic models we will talk about later. 
When it comes to known demand models, we will differentiate between two key groups of models, dependent demand models and independent demand models. Dependent demand models apply, for example, when we seek to make ordering decisions for distribution centers whose inventory requirements depend on demand levels at the retail outlets they serve. We call this Distribution Requirements Planning, or in short, DRP. And we will talk more about this particular dependent demand model in a separate lecture. Besides dependent demand models, there is a second group of known demand models called independent demand models. These models apply when we make inventory decisions for products whose demand levels are independent of demand for other products or at other stocking locations. You may be familiar with the Economic Order Quantity Model, or EOQ. This is a great and well-known example of an independent demand model. Again, we will review this model in another lecture. Let me take a moment to also provide a brief overview of the second group of inventory models for random demand and lead times. As I mentioned earlier, these models build on the simpler models for known demand, such as the EOQ. But they are, perhaps, more powerful and relevant in practice because they allow us to make inventory decisions in light of uncertainty. Within this group of models, we will distinguish between multiple order models and single order models. In other lectures, we will talk more about the differences between these random demand models, how they work, and when they should be applied. For now, I hope that this lecture has helped you appreciate the importance of inventory management and given you a high-level overview of some key models we will learn about.